And Reince Priebus is the head of the RNC. He joins us live right now. The uh, president-elect referred to you as a superstar last night when he made that speech at 3 o'clock over at the headquarters of the Hilton. Tell us what it was like when you realized he was going to win, because the early exit poll that was released to you and to the networks was that uh, Donald Trump was going to lose. Yeah, well, first of all, in those exit polls, uh, they always throw campaigns into a tailspin. No matter how many times campaigns and operatives say, these don't matter, don't worry about it, you still go bananas when those things come out. But... I think what we did in, on the campaign was you just say, no, enough. We are not going to let this information get in the way with what we know we did and where we're at. Well, so what, numbers, what, we did. what numbers later did you see that said, hey, wait a minute, uh, we got a shot at this? Well, I would just say that uh, the RNC and the campaign worked hand and glove together, and we were together in, in, in a particular room. And as the people know, it was sort of a, an accumulation of states that kept going our direction but we stayed on florida and we we knew that we couldn't get off of florida now we didn't know that michigan and pennsylvania yeah. and wisconsin at the time were going to go the way they did we had a good feeling about it our but voter you scores needed florida we needed it so we stayed on it and once that started coming our direction exactly where the early vote advantage was for us the Democrats tried playing this game for a week that they had this early vote advantage, and we kept coming on these shows saying, no, we're the ones that are actually 100,000 better today right. than we were four years ago. And all of those margins fell into place, and it, was, and it wasn't that that won the election. It was Donald Trump, his message of freedom and, and sovereignty for this country. It's the same message that's winning all over the world, and it won here. Right, so you had to make a decision when the Billy Bush video was released, whether or not you were going to stick by his side or if you were going to go a different direction and not support him like some other people in the establishment did. And look at Kelly Ayotte and what she's facing now. How did you make that decision? And I'm sure now you're glad you, you did. He thanked you last night. He appreciates loyalty. We know that. How did you make that decision? Well, I mean, I, I, we've had these choices all along. Um, as chairman of the party, I have to support the nominee of our party. And he was chosen overwhelmingly by 14 and a half million people, like no nominee in the history of the Republican Party. Um, it's not my job to nullify the will of the voters of our party. And so I had a job to do, and that was to support the nominee. Right. That was the job I was going to do the entire time. And on top of it, you know, I got to know who he was. And I've always said, you know, everyone always assumes uh, that the rally Donald Trump is the Donald Trump all the time. And it's just not the case. The guy in private is the gracious, personable per guy that I've gotten to know. And as the American people got to know who that person was, I, I, I just right. think it was part of the, the reason why he won. So interesting because Mike Pence basically said the same thing, yet their personalities couldn't be more opposite, but they seem to gel. And like Mike Pence, uh, you're considered one of the uh, unsung heroes of this whole biggest upset in American political history. Now, the speech. I'm watching the other channels before I came here at 2.30, 3.30, when they're saying, what a speech. Even the people that were teary-eyed yeah. because he won. What went into that speech? What could you tell us went into the choreography there? Um, I, I, I think that, number one, Donald Trump, after the speech and before he was declared the victor, is the same person before and after. However, I will say that once it was determined that he was going to be the winner and he started looking at and thinking about that speech, he knew and he brought it upon himself, he said no. We are going to calm the waters. We are going to bring people together. We're not going to brag about how we did. So he edited this, the original? Well, he's very involved in all these speeches. Believe it or not, even though he did five rallies a day, he, I'm, I'm serious, not a lot of people do what he did. He goes through every single page, mm -hmm. makes corrections, gives it to... So last night, though, it was important on, upon him. He said, no, we're not going to brag. We're not going to relitigate our arguments over the campaign this is a time to tell the american people and the rest of the world that's watching right that we are going to bring people together people and have said to do it was his best speech yet and people were wondering either someone else wrote it for him no. or he has learned over the course of the last 17 months what america really wants to bring unity no that was his not only his speech but it was donald trump's decision to say no we are not going to relitigate these issues. We are not going to brag. Every single thing that had to do with, you know, this is, you know, the old rhetoric mm -hmm. was gone. 
And I think that's what he wants to do. He wants to be a great president, and he will be. Sure, it must have been a sober moment to be in the room with the guy who is realizing, hey, I'm the next president of the United States. Right, and he did. And, you know, it's a special place. And, uh, you know, God what, what called us to be what some light in the world. And, and I think he, and I know he understands that. What did he say to the people when, when it sunk in? I just won this thing. Um, he, he, quiet. And he started realizing that it's time now to communicate. How very un Donald Trump like. You know, he's really not, yeah, he really is a, a, he is a reflective person. He isn't a bombastic uh, guy that the media tries to portray. He is a gracious, personable guy that has a lot of qualities that right. makes him very endearing. Something very substantial is going to happen today. Hillary Clinton at 930 is going to speak. Then the president's going to speak, and then he invited Donald Trump to the White House. What's that going to be like, knowing the history between these two that dates back to the Washington Correspondence Dinner? Um, Donald Trump can sit down with anybody, and he's very good. One-on-one, -on -one, There's I've never seen anyone bring people in and kind of inoculate any sort of nervousness or anxiety and just make people feel... Mm -hmm like a million bucks. He's I, good at it. He knows how to communicate. And he's learned about humility. He apologized after the Billy Bush said, thing. He said, I'm so sorry that I did that. There's no way to treat a woman. And then last night I noticed he said, this has actually been really hard. Yeah. And I'm, you know, we all just assume Donald Trump can handle this. He's yeah. built buildings. He's, he can stay up all night. He can go state to state. But he actually acknowledged that and, and showed some, I felt some empathy for him when he said sure. that. So hopefully you all can rest and <laughs> uh, maybe next week you yeah. can start You're running right the country. That. Right. <laughs> right. Was it a great feeling knowing he called you a superstar? Um, Your family well, must have been happy. This is a story that he has said many times. He talks about the the, the bronze secretariat, and you can't, you know, yeah, no one bronze is the second place yeah. finisher. But this wasn't about me. It was about the American people, the message of Donald Trump, and the fact that people want to take their country back and they want their freedom. But he well, couldn't have done it without you. He couldn't. Well, he did it, and All right. it's what it's about. Right. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thanks so much. All, All the best. You bet. All right.